So I'm Clint Finley, uh, write for Wired. Uh, there's a bunch of my info there. Uh, if, this is gonna be actually based on an article I did for Wired a few months ago. And you can find that article with the, uh, the bit.ly link down there. So uh, a lot of you probably have, well, so this is gonna be about bots, but it's not about like the election bots and that sort of thing. I've written a little bit about that. I probably will write more about it in the future, but that's not what I'm really talking about today. Uh, this is gonna start off talking more about e-commerce, which uh, I hope to tie back into the themes of Cyborg Camp a little bit as we go on. Uh, so you, you're probably at least vaguely aware that companies like Amazon and Walmart uh, monitor each other's pricing data and use that to adjust their own prices up or down. Uh, so uh, diapers.com accused Amazon of having essentially like, driven them out of business so they could acquire them by using that method of just constantly undercutting diapers.com by just monitoring the prices. Uh, so I should also disclose here, Amazon and Walmart would not talk to me for this uh, article or this talk. So when I use them, it's just purely hypothetically. Companies like Amazon and Walmart, let's say, and, the, and those are the examples that I'll use. Um, so the, the, the kind of crazy thing here though is so, so they're, they want to monitor each other's prices, right? But they want to stop each other from monitoring each other's prices. So it ends up being the sort of spy versus spy game where Walmart, hypothetically, wants to go out and find out what, Wal what Amazon is charging for a tube of toothpaste. Amazon likewise wants to do that, but they don't want Walmart to get involved. They don't want Walmart to do any of this. So they try to block Walmart from, from seeing their prices. So the first way that this ties into to Cyborg Camp is that they try to block bots in general from accessing their websites. And one of the, so the, one of the ways to do that that you've probably all seen is the reCAPTCHA where you have this checkbox for I'm not a robot and you're, you're like, isn't that exactly what a robot would say? Uh, but uh, the way they actually, the way that works is they're, they're looking at your mouse movements on your desktop or on your phone accelerometer and uh, gyroscope uh, movements to see like, is this the way a human moves a mouse? Is this the way a human hits their phone, like does the phone move a little bit when they hit that button? So the thing that surprised me though, as I was researching this article, I found out that uh, some companies like Akamai are actually doing that same sort of uh, surveillance even when we are not faced with a CAPTCHA. They're watching to see if you're human. So we're kind of constantly, secretly being surveilled to see if we're humans or replicants or not, which I found super weird and, and Kind of cool, but also kind of creepy that, that this is happening constantly. So that's just one part of how companies try to keep bots off of their networks though, because it's a lot more complicated than that, because they don't want to outright ban all bots. Because that would mean like Google couldn't index their site. Uh, sometimes uh, e-commerce companies want to uh, participate in different price comparison sites. So they, they do want bots, some bots to be able to get in. So one of the things they do is they look at IP addresses. So if Amazon sees that the traffic is coming from a Walmart corporate IP address, they'll just block that, right? So they will also look and see, is that coming from their own cloud service or like Microsoft Azure or DigitalOcean or all these different cloud companies because they know oh, that's probably not a human because humans don't live in the cloud, that's a bot. So they can block or, or throttle kind of the access based on, on that. So that leads to the, like, the next step in the spy versus spy activity where companies try to essentially present themselves uh, from IP addresses that are actual regular everyday uh, residential IP addresses. So there's this company called uh, Luminati because that doesn't <laughs> sound ominous at all. And uh, they get you, they, so they partner with apps to, uh, and offer as like this alternative to, to seeing ads in an app. You can agree to show, let them use some of your resources. And what they're using your resources for is to let these bots like scrape websites mostly. And Luminati wouldn't talk to me about who their customers were, but um, they, I, I found one, one of their customers is a company called Comptera. And CompTERRA was like pretty open about who some of their customers are. So uh, uh, like Nine West, the shoe company uses them, but also like 
uh, product companies like Acer and Panasonic. And a lot of what they're using this for is, you know, it's, it's very, um, it's very understandable why they would want to do some of this stuff. They, it's not just grabbing prices from competitors. Somebody like Acer wants to see how their, their products are being presented on an e-commerce site. Like, are there, are there prices being lower than what their agreement is supposed to be? What photos are used? What descriptions are used? So th there's a, a lot of, of good reasons to be doing scraping and lots of good reasons to try to get past these bot gate, gatekeepers. So I don't think that, that these companies are evil or anything like that. Um, and I mean, faced with this choice between ads and kind of letting these bots use my phone a little bit, I, I thought I thought really hard about this a lot. And I think, yeah, I would totally do this. But the thing is, if you look at this, uh, it's not really telling you what you're actually consenting to if you agree to let them use your resources. That's, that's all it says here is, I agree to let them use my idle resources. They're not saying, I, you're not saying I agree to let you run bots on my phone that go out and scrape all these web pages. It's, um, and, and I think that's what, what gets me about all of this is that we're being constantly surveilled uh, regarding our humanity. We're being sort of, I say we, I've never seen this come up on, on any app. So uh, this is just like on Luminati's website, like who, their, their example app there. Uh, but that this app has like, I think like a million downloads or something in the Android store. So, uh, I mean, it's definitely out there. Um, but it, it bugs me because this is, uh, uh, it, it, there's this whole the notion of consent and technology that it overlaps a lot with consent in uh, what I know Amber doesn't like to call real life, but uh, <laughs> uh, what I did, okay. Uh, so there's, there's been a few articles over the past few years, and these actually predate the, the whole Me Too movement that draw a link between the often tenuous uh, amount of consent in the personal lives of the, in the technology industry, as we've seen with numerous uh, sexual harassment and other sexual misconduct cases in the industry, and this general sense that the, that users can just be uh, that that companies can just do whatever they want to users. Uh, we have the terms of service agreements that we just have to agree to or not agree to. And buried within them are all of these things that we don't really understand that we're agreeing to. There's this notion um, called uh, enthusiastic consent. Uh, in, uh, I'll sound like an anthropologist here, in human sexuality. Uh, or the, the idea is that it's not just that somebody is saying yes to a particular activity, they are saying that, that they are not being coerced into saying yes, that they are really actually wanting to say yes to this, and that they know what they're saying yes to. In technology, in the, in, within the industry at least, this is just so incredibly often not the case. And uh, so that's, that's what I wanted to, to leave people with is, uh, uh, for technologists is to really be thinking about this both as a user, what are you actually consenting to, and as designers of technology, how can you take a more active stand in towards uh, making sure that people actually understand what they're getting into with this stuff. So uh, do I have any more time or if so I can do questions but I don't know if, who's got the stopwatch. Um, we have room for one question if someone wants to ask a question. All right, I guess it was really understandable. Okay. <laughs> All right, thanks everybody.